Oh, hey, folks. What's happening? We're here at uh, Hard Intentions YouTube channel. Listening to Little Fried Brothers while I paint. Figure it's time for another video. Um, hope you're all doing well. I like listening to the Fried Brothers from Sacramento, biker band, very notorious. Harry's a great guy, uh, put out some good music, and uh, of course I gotta have good music while I paint. Get a chance, check them out. Fried Brothers, Sacramento. You know, I gotta uh, tell you, you know, this YouTube thing's uh, great. I have a lot of great responses. We have some Patreon people uh, donating. Daniel, Justin, and we got another one last night. I haven't got his name yet, but I just want to thank you folks a lot. It means a lot. <clears throat> we have, uh, of course, this is Hard Intentions YouTube. We also have HardIntentions.com where we sell t-shirts and prints of my artwork and of course this is a piece I'm painting right now for a guy it's a hard one because the photograph I'm using is kind of blurry um, but I'll get it done hopefully I get a little, a little paint on my lip uh, somebody asked me about the weight pile and somebody else mentioned uh, transfers what those are like so maybe I can address some of that um, so you know, I spent time in Youth Authority, and uh, Youth Authority, I used to lift weights, you know, nothing serious. But, um, we were all young kids, and we did the best we could, but, uh, of course, we never got too big. You know, I mean, I was a teenager, so, I mean, you're still growing. You're only going to get so big when you're a kid, right? But uh, when I got to prison, all the weight piles were... Uh, all the weights are welded. You know, you had dumbbells, but for the most part, all the weights were welded, which meant like, uh, well, we use pig iron. So pig iron is like 25 pound plates. When you go to a gym, you got mostly Olympic iron, but you'll see the little, the littler weights, uh, with a smaller hole in them. That's pig iron. And, and, uh, the weight piles are all outside, you know, like in Chino, the weights were on asphalt. Uh, some places they're in dirt and gravel, mostly, right, out on the yard. So when it's raining, you're lifting weights in the rain if you're diehard, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, so I got to Chino, you know, I didn't lift that much weight because, uh, you know, I ended up in the hole real quick, like. And, uh, but, you know, I did a shoe turn back then. They even had weights in the shoe. Um, I mean, guys had weapons in the shoe. Back in the shoe back then, you had uh, anywhere from 25 to 50, 60 guys on the yard doing shoe, shoe terms, you know. When the shoe as a whole, you know, uh, when you screw up, you get a shoe term, security housing unit. But they had weights on the yard in the shoe, and they also had Max B, which was called Management Control Unit at San Quentin. Uh, that's been played out. Uh, but uh, they had weights on the yard and they, and they were welded and they had uh, and of course the uh, shoe yards are all segregated so there's no need for separate weight piles but um, when you have welded weights I mean you got to make a serious jump I mean you might have to jump from you know a 200 pound max to a 560 pound max uh, <clears throat> we call them quarters like uh, if you got a bar with two quarters on there, that means it has two quarters on each side. So that would be, you know, 100 pounds plus the weight of the bar. We usually figure the bar weighs anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds, you know, 15 pounds. Um, yeah, so in the hole, I played a lot of handball and I lifted weights, you know. But I was a skinny. I was tall. I was kind of skinny. You know, I wasn't that big. I mean, I was young. I grew, I grew up. I got taller faster than I got thicker, you know, so, uh, getting underneath welded iron was, was kind of a challenge, uh, you know, because like I say, you know, you have to go from a certain weight to a next, to the next weight, you know, there's no incremental jumps in weight, um, uh, so when I got out of the hole, they had weight, they had welded weights too on the yard, 
on the main line, but um, they also had loose weights, so they would have 25 pound, you know, plates, uh, you know, quarters, and they'd have dimes and nickels and all that stuff. So um, then you start stacking weight on, you know, you can start putting weight on. Uh, you know, I my thing, uh, you know, later on, once I really, really got into weightlifting, um, you know, when I was younger, I got on the main line there in Vacaville, I had weights, uh, you know, I, I would go out and lift weights occasionally, but I was partying too, so I mean, weights were kind of a secondary thing. I maintained, uh, you know, my enough to keep my strength up, you know, that was the deal. You want to keep your strength up because you never know when you're going to need it, either for work or for fighting or whatever, you never know. Uh, so it was all about handball mostly. And weights. Weights were kind of secondary to handball and work and hobby and partying, <clears throat> you know. Uh, but uh, I'd drive iron, you know. I'd hit the weights like two, three days a week, sometimes four days a week. But I played handball uh, every chance I got. And, uh, of course, I had a job and I hobbied. Uh, and there, you know, hobby was all day. It went from noon to, you know, dinner you know, count time, and then after dinner, after count, until 8 o'clock, so I didn't get a lot of yard time, uh, and if you're partying, the weights are kind of, <laughs> you know, but anyways, uh, from there, I went to, uh, I ended up, when I ended up in New Folsom, I went back to San Quentin for a hot minute, but I ended up in New Folsom, and it really kind of surprised me, because uh, it was kind of an asshole place, but they had really nice weight pile, and it was just a long strip, you know, gravel, and they had a, they had a white section, a Mexican section, and a black section. So each race had their own weights uh, in this little strip of gravel, and that was an iron pile, you know. And, and so you had a lap machine, you had a bunch of benches, and then so we had pig iron and we had Olympic iron. That's the first place I ever went that had Olympic iron on the yard. I, it just blew me away. They had really good weights on the yard there, and. Uh, yeah, my homeboy Chili was there, and uh, he had been a serious weightlifter when he was younger. He was a big dude, you know. He was from San Diego, and um, so he saw me. What? So, you know, I used to. I didn't work like my legs are big, so I didn't work legs. But a lot of guys do. So I would do bench one day. Then the next day I would do curls, back arms, right? And then the third day I would do shoulders and lats. You know, your lats, your wings, they call them wings, you know? So, uh, Chili saw me doing a bench press, you know? And he's like, hey bro, don't, you know, he came over and gave me some tips, you know? He was, uh, I, I love Chili, man, he was a great guy. But what guys would do is put on weight um, I would work out with the, the Olympic iron, so uh, you have 45 pound plates and then I would have like 25 or, and, and uh, so I would do a set, you know, and you work your way up from low to heaviest weight, you know, but, and then you do a couple reps and then the guys would pull the 25 pound plate off or 35 pound plate, whatever, then you do some more, you know, and uh, Chili came over there and he goes, hey bro, don't do that. I'm like, what do you mean, you know, and he says, uh, don't pull it off, you know, he, he goes, you work out with what you can work out with, you know, you work your way up, right, and then when you, you get to where you can only do one rep, just do that one rep, he said, don't pull that weight off so you can do more reps, that's not cool, you're not going to build your strength up like that, so I started working out like that, and, uh, and my strength went up, you know, quite a bit, um, then I, when I went to Tracy, uh, they had they had magnificent weight piles there. They had uh, they had a black weight pile, white weight pile, south sider weight pile. Then later on, when the northerners started coming back onto the main line there, they had their own weight pile. And so uh, <clears throat> I started working out with this guy, uh, Big Fred, who's passed away. Uh, he was from SAC, and uh, he was taller than me. I think he was about six six, and he was huge. I mean, his arms are like you know, 21, 22 inch arms. He was just a massive dude, man. And uh, I loved him, he was cool. He, was, he had a sense of humor and everybody thought Fred was kind of an asshole, you know, but he wasn't, he was he was cool. But, uh, you know, he was in, he got me into a lot of the uh, 
you know, weightlifting for strength, weightlifting for strength. And that's really when I got into the, the mentality that, um, you know, I wasn't going to carry a piece. I was just going to get strong. And if I had a problem with somebody, I was just going to smash them, you know, hit them in the face, crush their jaw, whatever. That was the mentality, you know, that, that uh, if you're strong enough, you could, you could mess somebody up you know, with your fist more than you can with a piece. I mean, with a piece you could kill him, but with your fist you could teach him a lesson, right? So Fred got me into this, like, taking uh, amino acids that are growth hormone releasers, like a, a arginine, lysine, uh, you have to take together, because if you take arginine by itself, you get cold sores or some shit, and then ornithine, so you know, bee pollen, all this kind of stuff, desiccated liver, you know, we were taking all this kind of stuff, and you could order it through special purchase off the, off the uh, catalogs and stuff, so I got a one pound jug of ornithine powder, and I would take a spoonful of that every night before I went to bed, and theoretically what it does is it, it releases growth hormone while you uh, sleep. So Fred got me into that, you know, we'd be driving Iron Man and he was just a beast and he'd show me these magazines and he'd go, look brother, this is a weight class for for his weight, guys that were a year clean from steroids and they weren't getting as much weight as he was, you know, on the Natch, he never took roids, he was just an eating machine and a driving machine, you know, <clears throat> and of course, I never uh, took roids either, I mean, it's, you know. I remember when I was cellies with this guy, Dennis, Dirty Dennis from Oakland, who's passed away, um, you know, and his wife has passed on as well, but uh, he was a very good, good uh, friend, but I remember we, he goes, hey man, uh, we're going to get some steroids and we're going to work out, you know, and I said, yeah, whatever you want to do, brother, you know, he was older cat, you know, he got busted in 1970, so he's older than me, probably maybe 10 years or so older than me, but uh he came back from a visit and he said, uh, he said, yeah, my old lady said she'll bring me anything I want, you know. Uh, I mean, we didn't use heroin or any of that kind of stuff, but uh, she told him, I'll bring you heroin, speed, coke, whatever you want. But she said, I'll never bring you them fucking steroids. And, uh, <clears throat> but anyways, uh, Tracy, Fred, and I was driving with another cat from SAC and, uh, you know, Fred was strong, man. He was, uh, you know, he was a strong dude. But I got up to like uh, 420 pounds, I think was my max that I would get when I was driving with Fred, you know. And and uh, I'd be driving, man, and he'd be like, man, you better get some more reps. You better get some more reps, you know. You're never going to get over 420 if you don't get some more reps. <laughs> or if I, if I missed a day, well, Fred would be on me, you know. You know, for missing a day of driving. Yeah. So, now you, if you're serious into driving, I mean, you have to have, at Tracy at the time, we had limited yard. I mean, we had yard uh, in the afternoons, I think. Yeah, in the afternoons, and then the reception center had the yard in the mornings. And so I had to have a job where I could go to the yard. And in the summer, you had night yard, but only in the summer. So, and then weekends you have yard all day because, you know, uh, guys that wear, work have the weekends off. But you had to be, uh, you had to have a red card. And a red card meant you were A1A status. It meant you had a job. So, what I did is I got a job working nights in PIA for a while. I did that for about a year. Man, nine months to a year. So I, so I would work nights, come home take a little nap, get up and go to the yard at noon and uh, work out, come in shower and then get another nap and go to work at night at 8.30 at night. So you, you got to get your schedule, you know, to where you can you can uh, drive iron. Uh, PIA also had weights. Prison industry had a weight pile. So during your lunch break and your 15 minute breaks, you could go out and bang off a few sets. So um, when I worked daytime at Industries, I'd go work out at work. Then I'd go out the yard at night in the summer and work, and work out. But, uh, you know, I was just on it, man. So, you know, I, I ended up going to Donovan. And at Donovan, they had a decent weight pile. It was big, you know, and they had a lot of pig iron. Um, oh, one thing about Tracy, too, is we had a, a good coach there, Coach Marty. 
Uh, he really liked us, man. He's a guy that would organize the barbecues on the yard on holidays and bring in live bands and all that kind of stuff. But he would have the 300-pound club. And I still got my 300-pound club card around here somewhere. I don't know where it's at. But uh, uh, you, he would put 300 pounds on the bench with Olympic iron. Then he would put a belt over the bench, you know, and you'd lay down on the belt. Because when you lift weights, you're not supposed to arch your back. A lot of guys arch their back to get a better push. But what they what they think, you know, helps them get the weight up. But you're not really pushing it up. You're just kind of, you know, you're cheating yourself. And you could break your back doing that stuff with heavy, heavy weight. So Marty would put a belt on there. You lay down on the belt. And then you, you bring that 300 pounds down to your chest and pause it for three seconds. And then push it back up. And then if you did that, you got a pair of weight gloves and you got a 300-pound card and all that kind of stuff to the hog pit. But, uh, yeah, Coach Smarty, was, uh, he treated us pretty good, and he got us as much stuff as he could possibly get with his budget, you know. So uh, when I went to Donovan, uh, <clears throat> that's when I really, that's when they took the weights, too. Uh, I went to Donovan in 93. I stayed there till 96, towards the end of 96, but, uh, you know, I worked as a plumber, man, and I would go out to night yard, uh, and my thing was three on, one off, you know, like I said, I would do arms, I would do chest, arms, and then shoulders and lats, you know, and uh, what I would do, because all they had there is pig iron as well, I would put two quarters on the bar, which is 100 pounds, and I'd do, you know, 10, 15 reps, I do two sets like that. Then I put another quarter on each side, which that's 150 plus the weight of the bar, you know. Then I do two sets, two sets all the way up. I just add a quarter, do two sets, add a quarter, do two sets. Now, you know, some of these dudes were taking roids and snorting crank before they go out to drive iron, and you know they could barely even push 300 pounds, six quarters, you know. And I get six quarters on there, man. I'm doing, you know, eight, ten reps. You know, I'm I was getting pretty strong, man. And uh, and then, but your reps as you go up, you know, because you're working out, they get less. The heavier the weight gets, the less reps you get, you know. And then I would do uh, inclines, bench press, declines, bench press. And then we had all our weights lined up, you know, your dumbbells. And I would do, uh, they call them champagnes. You just bring the weight down to your chest like this. Use lighter weight for that. But I got up to where I was using 120 pound dumbbells doing that. And then you do uh, like this, you know, wide with your dumbbells. And then uh, you do the flies, the light weight. You just come out and just stretch your chest out like that, you know. And uh, <clears throat> I got up to... Uh, uh, when they took the weights, I had a 500-pound bench. I got I could get 500 pounds and a flat back, uh, which is not 10 quarters. That was 10. That was nine quarters, a dime, and a nickel on each side, and uh, I could do that. And I could hit it one time. And I'm telling you, man, it was heavy. All these guys say, oh, their homeboy could hit 50 quarters and all this other stuff. You know, no really guys would say, oh, my homeboy could get 12 quarters and 10 times and all this. I don't believe it. If I didn't see it, I didn't believe it. I had a homeboy, Big Mike Woods, man. And Mike could hit a lot of weight. He was shorter than me, and I mean, he's just a big, stocky barrel, you know. I believe Mike could hit 10, 11, 12 quarters because I seen it. He was a big dude, you know, a big, stocky dude, crazier and shit, but I loved him. Anyway, guys would say that. I don't believe it because that 500-pound that bench was... You feel it. It's a, it's a it's a heavy weight, you know. And then uh, for curls, I I hated doing curls. <clears throat> I love doing back arms, but I did not like doing curls. Curls are for your bicep, you know. I just do like ten or fifteen sets with a the bar. Then we do like five, six, seven sets, you know, preacher curls. That's a bench, you know. You it keeps your arms from it keeps you from swinging you know i see guys stack a bunch of weight on there and they're going like this with the curl bar you know curling it up like yeah i could curl you know whatever they're cheating they're not curling that much weight they're cheating 
uh, you know, you're supposed to keep your back straight and just use your arms. That's what curls are. You're curling. It's for that bicep muscle, you know. That's what you want to build up. And, I, you know, I did it because you don't want to cheat your arms when you're doing arms. But I hated doing curls. And uh, one reason I hated it, too, is when I was working out with Fred, we, you know, we do back arms. You hold the bar like this. You're laying down. You don't need to bring it down to your... I used to bring it to the back of my forehead right here, and you push it up. You just bend your elbows, you know, and it works your back arms. So Fred goes, hey, let's do uh, some reverse barbarians, he called them. So instead of holding the bar like this, you hold it like this, you know. And I'm like, yeah, all right, whatever. And I pull the muscle in this arm here, the tendon or something. And it's still sore to this day. And that was in, like, uh, 92 that happened. So doing curls... It, it, I could feel it, but I, I hated doing curls. I just hated it, but, uh, you know, because most of your power and your punch and stuff comes from your back arm, your lats, your chest, and your shoulder. That's where your punch comes from, but I did curls just because it's part of the deal. You got to do them, you know. <clears throat> so anyway, I would do the curls like that, and then the back arm, same way as the bench. I lay down and start off with a couple dimes, you know. Then a quarter, then a quarter and a dime, then another quarter. You know, you work your way up to three, four, five quarters back arming. So now you're back arming 250, 270, you know. That was great, man. And I'll tell you what, back then I used to smoke weed, and I'd smoke weed for I went out and hit the weights. And, man, not all the time, but occasionally. When I smoke weed and go out and, and hit that bench, I could just feel your muscles working, man. You get in a groove. It's, it's like you get lubricated, you know, once you start going and you get in a groove and you just, uh, it gets good to you. I'll tell you, once you start lifting weights and you got a few months into it, it gets good to you. It really does. But, uh, so that was the deal. And then with the uh, shoulders, you know, I would do with the bar in the front and then the bar in the back. I'd work my way up to four or five quarters, and then I would do shoulders like this with dumbbells, you know. And, uh, yeah, that was it. And then we do lats in the machine. You just do pull downs, you know. Um, and then we'd walk laps, you know. Uh, on nights that I, that I lift the weights, I try not to play handball because slinging handball and lifting weights don't always go good together. <laughs> yeah, you end up hyperextending your elbow and hurt yourself. But, uh I remember one time we were on the weights, and uh, my celly at the time was in a motorcycle club, you know, we're out there lifting weights, and he's a few years older than me, and, and uh, there was this paisa. Now, they had they had the blacks, the whites, and the, and the south siders weight pile, and the south siders didn't like the paisas in their weight pile, so they made them, they made them lift weights outside the weight pile, and that was a problem because... Each group had their own weights. All the white dudes' weights had a white dot on them. And uh, I kept finding weights, white dudes' weights, in the south side of weight pit and outside the weight pile where the pices worked out. And I'd go out to the night yard, round up all the weights, throw it back into the uh, the uh, the white weight pit, you know, white, white weight area. And uh, finally I got tired of it. So I put a little red dot next to the white dot for our... For our, uh, that was for me and my driving partners, you know, that was our weights, you know, because we had a lot of weight. I lifted a lot of weights, so did my driving partner, uh, one of them lifted weights a lot, heavy weight. So, I just said, hey, you know, if you guys don't give a shit, man, I'm tired of rounding them up every night. So, anyway, that's how that went. And then, uh, one night I go out there and our bench is outside the weight pile. It's in the Pisa area, so I bring it back in. I tell us our bench kept happening, you know. So we put the red dot on there, and and because uh, we had our own our own benches too, you know. And uh, this guy comes over there, you know. They had spray painted it orange, and uh, for like that meant that that was like Pisces, you know. And uh, he says, "Hey, that's our bench." I said, "No, it's not. It's ours. This is our bench." Because, you know, you get to recognize your equipment. Our bench, this bench had little dings in it and everything. I knew it was our bench. And I said, that's our bench. I said, look, man, just because you steal it and take it out there and put a little paint on it doesn't make it yours. This is our fucking bench. I use it every night. And uh, 
He got mad, you know, he's staring at me. I said, hey, man, if this is your bench, I put my foot on it, you know. I said, take it. Take it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he didn't. He didn't take it. Yes, it wasn't his. And he knew where that was going to lead. But, uh, yeah, you know, the weight pile, I mean, everyone has their own weights, you know. <clears throat> Each crew would have, like, they had weight, weight sections within the white weight pit. Uh, some white dudes don't lift that heavy a weight. They'll have maybe five quarters on each side of the bench, certain bars. And then other guys have a little more. And then guys, you know, that lift super heavy weight for the yard, they would have more. And, and they would stack it by each bench, and it would stay stacked by those benches. And then, so during the day, guys that used our bench, they would restack it, you see? And that night we would use it and restack it, and uh, you, you know there was a lot of respect for the weight pit, man. And uh, you know, it, for me, it was a twofold deal. It showed personal growth. I got to burn a lot of energy. I go to work all day, come home for count, you know, eat dinner, relax a little bit, go out to the yard and just burn that energy, right? And then uh, it also shows uh, personal gains, you know, when you, when you get to where you can bench press, you know, three, four, five hundred pounds on the, on the bench, that's personal growth, man. And, and it's, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a big deal, you know, and you know, they said they took the weights away from us because cops on the street said we were getting too big and they couldn't control us. Well, here's the deal. Cops on the street got guns, pepper spray, tasers, all that. And cops in prison have uh, all the same things. They got tasers, pepper spray, guns. So I, I, I really, I don't think they took it because we were getting too big. I think they took it just like they took everything else. Uh, they took it because it, that there was a way to punish us. They did it because they hate us, you know. And uh, kind of hurt my feelings, man. To be honest with you, because if a guy's a fuck up, uh, he's not lifting weights. And some guys lift weights that were screw-ups, but, I mean, and, and think about this. Guy, i seen guys parole that were huge, big, and i seen them come back in a month, sucked up, skinny as a toothpick. So when you go to the streets, if you continue lifting weights, I mean, to stay big and strong, you have to continue lifting weights and working out. And that means you're eating good. It means you've got some money in your pocket, right? It means you're programming out in the street. Uh, so I, you know, it was kind of bullshit. The reason they took the weights, I, I didn't agree with it. I didn't like it. And, uh, it, it kind of sucked. So, you know, I kept hearing the rumors, you know, they were going to take the weights and, uh, they did. I went out the yard, you know, and they had a bunch of pallets and these guys were stacking all the weights on pallets and the cops were driving the forklifts, carting them off the yard. And I told them dudes, Hey man, what are you doing? You're giving them our weights. Oh, well, you know, uh, I said, no, nah, man, I don't know, you know, uh, it pissed me off a lot. Uh, you know, they were giving them our weights. They were helping them take our weights, man. And, uh, I mean, that's how much the system changed. Because back in the day, they, weren't, they wouldn't help the cops do nothing. If they were to try to take our weights in the early 80s, mid 80s, all the way up to like 90, maybe, uh, there would have been some serious problems. I mean, for, for staff. Uh... You know, I mean, that's, they would have had some problems. I don't know what kind of problems they would have had, but they definitely would not have done it uh, with no consequence. Um, so to see these guys stacking the weights on pallets and giving them up, I was just, it just blew my mind, you know. And, and then they replaced the weights with uh, dip bars, pull-up bars, stuff like that, you know. And, um, you know, I, I mean, it's down to doing dips, pull-ups, and push-ups pretty much. And, uh, yeah, I, I could get with the push-ups a little bit and the dips, but, I you know, pull-ups are, if you weigh, uh, you know, 300 pounds and you're trying to do pull-ups, good luck. <laughs> if you can, uh, <coughs> excuse me, mm. if you can knock off 10 pull-ups at a pop or more at, you know, 300 pounds, 6'4", 300 pounds, 280, whatever. You're strong, dude. I'll tell you what, I've seen guys that were in the hole that didn't have weights. And guys that uh, 
got big in prison after they took the weights. Guys that came to prison after they took the weights, and they got big doing dips and pull-ups. I'm going to tell you, I've seen some guys get big doing that, and uh, they're super strong. I mean, that's the kind of strength that stays with you. Weightlifting strength will stay with you. But you got to get, if you quit lifting weights for a while, you got to get back on it and build it back up. But you, you maintain a certain amount of strength. But if you get big doing dips and pull ups and push ups, oh man, that strength right there, it doesn't go away. And, uh, you know, guys are doing burpees, guys are knocking off. I got up to where I could do, you know, 150, 200 burpees. But uh, there were guys doing four, five, 600 burpees, 1,000 burpees a day. And just puddles of sweat. They just sit there and do burpees all day, and just uh, blew my mind, man. You know that the burpees started hurting my back, so I quit doing them. Uh, you know, I think the Marine Corps quit doing them too. So, you know, it's uh, yeah. So that's the story of weights and where it went. You know, nowadays guys are just uh, doing a lot of walking, a lot of bar work push-ups, calisthenics, stuff like that, but uh, that's the story of the weights, you know, thank you guys for watching, uh, thanks for all the positive comments, I really appreciate it, um, man, I don't know what to say, thanks for the so guys who subscribe to our channel, I see it's growing, it's great, um, you know, if you got any suggestions for future stories, please let us know. And if there's anybody over there in Ireland or any other country that's been to prison, whether you're a political prisoner or not, let me know if you'd like to do an interview. I'd like to get you on there and do some com uh, comparisons to uh, California prisons as opposed to uh, how things are in other countries. I heard in Holland, man, they let them have wine and tablecloths and big spreads and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know if that's true or not. But uh, anyway, folks. Just remember, we have uh, hardintentions.com. We sell our merchandise, you know, t-shirts and stuff, artwork, and uh, we appreciate your patronage. We really do. It's uh, it's just great stuff. Like I said before, it's a validation of a dream. Uh, I'll continue doing these stories for you as best I can. You guys take care of yourselves. Remember, you only live once. Don't waste it. Whatever you do, do it seriously hard. Thank you.